Uh, so I'm at 7th today. It's just about uh, 2.30 in the afternoon, so about 14 hours, 30 minutes into the day. was uh, screwed over. <laughs> the people who she thought were her friends uh, really weren't. And then he still has an issue with uh, the term socialism and communism. The problem is, uh, you know, Trotsky considered himself to be a communist. Same thing with Lenin. And so did Stalin. I mean, would you ever go up and you know, could he ever go up and go, oh yeah, no, no, they're not really communists, you see. I know, because I know a number of people who are, you know, they're charged to communists, they tell me, you know. And the thing is, I've got movies <laughs> about the same thing, and how other communists did consider the other communists to be, uh, you know, well, this is the whole argument, and this is orthodox. There's an entire list uh, on the internet called NFTU where there's Christians who call themselves Orthodox, and supposedly Christians anyways, will argue over the minutia of the law and that how Orthodox they are is the only way to be. But yet, if you go into the Gospel, what is Orthodoxy? Orthodoxy is stated is stated by Christ himself. It says, deny yourself as selflessness, pick up your cross, your struggles, and follow after me. That's it. And then what happens is you look at the, the progression of the Gospels, uh, particularly the publican, the Pharisee, and the prodigal son, and you find it's about forgiveness. And at the end, he, 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 in one of the chapters, he says, well, what is self, how do you do salvation? And the line is, is in terms of the sort of called the last judgment, because the dread last judgment, the question, is, the question or more or less statement is, that you did to, that you did to the least of men you did to me. In other words, if you're there and there's someone who's poor and, or, or well, let's say, let's say a hooker, right? A prostitute. A, a, you know, a harlot. To use those terms, a harlot. Or a prostitute. Right? Okay? That's okay, she's a harlot. Well, the last judgment is that you did to the least of, of men, you did to me. Now, men in this case, it has to be stated because there are a lot of woke idiots out there. And I'm using the phrase idiots from the term, from the Dostoevsky perspective. Now, there, he has a book on idiots that are relate, is related to his book on the possessed. Uh, so I'm using it in that sense. And we consider these people to be the low, one of the lowest of the low. We don't, oh, she wants it. Or, you know, when I heard she said she wanted it, so it's okay. Well, for a Christian, that's, and for everybody else, basically, and I'll show you how this sort of expands to everybody else. Because it doesn't, apparently, it doesn't track with others from the obvious perspective. There needs a bit of tweaking before you get to realize that it applies to everybody, including Hindus and Buddhists. Anyone who is considered to be on the right hand path, this is who it's referring to. Well, the last judgment is that you did to the least of men you did to me. Now, the thing is, is that both Hinduism and Buddhism 
on the right hand path you need to be selfless which means you're not you, you cannot put yourself above even the lowest person on earth this is the this, this is the, the basic tenement of the right hand path for all of the eastern and asian religions oh is it, and that must say because they're not really religious then the term needs to be defined here Religion are the things you do because of a particular belief. If you choose to do something of your own free will, so you're, not, you're not following a particular law, you're not following a particular order. It's your own understanding. It's your own path. Then you're not religious. A religious person follows a dictate of rules and orders. In other words, they don't think about what they do, they simply follow. They're obeying the law. That's Western Christianity. That's Sunni Islam. Shia Islam is not a... It, it, people do not blindly follow a religion. They have a choice there. And when you have choice, you no longer have religion. It's when there is no choice. This includes, this includes Catholicism and to a certain degree uh, Protestantism. Although to a lesser degree than than, than, you would, than you would have with the Catholics, you 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 have religion because it's about the law, it's about punishment, it's the, it's this whole thing of crime and punishment. And so we have set up, laid out for us. How we're supposed to act? Is what what orthodoxy is supposed to? That's that's the entire faith of Christianity. The entire faith of Christianity is there. And what is everything else? They're the accessories. They're the accessories to Christianity. Christians put on Christ. Christians have a direct oneness with Christ. Everything else. The services. The... the the icons, the this and the that. These are all accessories. And this is actually spoken of in the uh, uh, in the Gita, the uh, book of Hare Krishna, the main the main book. And it was two groups of people who had gone up to see Krishna, and they were upset about something. One of the people, one group of people said, I want to have your armies, I want to have your power to go, you know, vanquish my enemies. And so Krishna gave him the powers and the stuff. And the other looked at the other and said, Well, why are you still here? He says, Well, I want to talk to you. And the view there is, well, there are those who wanted the accessories of God, the accessories of Krishna. There are those who wanted Krishna himself. And this follows again within Christianity. Uh, and there's an overlap because Christianity is actually Eastern. The Western Christianity formed a thousand years later. It's a reform, it's a reconstruction of what was initially there, and it removes the choice becomes more about the law than anything else. So in Western Christianity, the choice is gone. It's not there. The, it, it takes the perspective of, of the servant. Uh, and this is, has to do with the prodigal son. Uh, the prodigal son leaves and, and returns to his house eventually uh, after a famine occurs. He goes, my, my father's servants have more than enough to eat. We have nothing here. We're starving to death. So I'm going to go back and ask my father, father if I could be a servant. He'll accept me as a servant. This is where most of Christianity comes in from. It's the fear of God. And so they take the position of the servant. However, if you read the, uh, this parable enough, what you'll find out is that the, the, the father 
opens the son back, the prodigal son back, with, with open arms. There's no question that he's going to be received back as the son. So what happens is our own perception, in many cases, if, if, if we ignore the second half, look at solely the first half returning as a servant and ignore the second half well within the gospel that the father opens the son, uh, uh, welcomes the son back with open arms but there is no question that he is the son in other words he's not received back as a servant he's received back as a family this is their situation the thing is that the church in many cases Follow the, the fear of God path, not the love of God. And this is what we do with Catholicism. We must take Christianity. Uh, 9.30 in the evening. Uh, it's starting getting dark now. So it's 21 hours and 30... Oh, just about 21 hours and 30 minutes into the uh, 7th day of August. Things are going well. I've got my list for tomorrow in terms of my shopping list. I'll be finished all of my shopping again. It is good. It cools out every night. It, keep, it doesn't, the heat doesn't last, which is good. And the new air system is working beautifully. Better than I ever expected it to. Slowly, we make my way back to her. Remember, we were talking about Lion LeBron. And I was talking about. Uh, sort of the term. Uh, communist, and why it becomes so. And these terms are sort of thrown around. Why it becomes so confusing. Uh, because there isn't simply one definition of the thing. And I'm talking about the, the sort of called the spectrum of understanding, and this can be seen, you know, as I'm talking before about the Orthodox, the Orthodox Christians. And there's a whole list uh, arguing about uh, uh, what is exactly Orthodox and who is the most Orthodox. Well, I think the Jews do the same thing. And this is why you also see in, in, in a number of such religions even Islam, you go to Islam, you see all the different uh, clerics and so on and so forth. And they, in many, many, many ways, are a religion unto themselves. Because the interpretation of what's happening is sort of left to the clerics. And so the clerics really run the church. And they make the definitions as to what is what, you know, in their religion. So we go talk about 
what is a Jew, what is a this, and what is a that, you know, uh, these sort of, you know, the, the definitions within the clerical, or let's say within the rabbinical sense. Well, again, you're dealing with an, an open-ended argument. Because if it's defined by any, er, er, any, uh, um, any cleric, any rabbi, then you're going to have a problem because you will see that if you look into, into the Jewish community, that the Jewish community is in many ways fragmented. There isn't a a clear understanding or an agreement. I mean, this is the whole problem when, when Israel wanted to call itself, and this is through some of its leaders, wanted to call it the, the state for Jews. They had a problem because the rabbis disagreed with it. And it's not a, it's not a state right for the state to say this is a, 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 who is and who isn't a Jew. You can say, the state can say who isn't or who is and who isn't an Israeli, but they cannot define the term Jew because that is the providence. That is the, uh, uh, the, the, the authority of the rabbi. And each individual rabbi has their own particular uh, senses on it. They have their own view as to what is and what isn't a Jew. So they, they'll go by their own standards. And this is the problem with, with, with uh, communism and socialism is that you have a lot of different standards. I think, and this, the part of the problem is that no standard, no, how, no matter how well defined, ever, ever lives up to the ideal. There is always failures to reach and attain the ideal. This is sort of what's happening now is sort of going through it and watching this what's happening in the world today and this is basically we're watching the collapse of humanism back into the Gnostic path. And so what happens is, oh, today is, is what's going on is communism. Well, no, not necessarily. What's going on is Gnosticism. The pagan past is coming back. And people don't realize how, and this is how Hegel fits into everything. The Hegel was a Gnostic. Most of the Roman Catholic Church were Gnostic pagans. Now, as I said before, but again, you've got to be careful with the term Gnostic, because Gnostic simply means those who believe in knowledge. And it depends on what the, so Gnostic and, and, and Gnosis have a wide uh, have a wide definition as well. It's simply those, it's a, it's a term of knowledge. Those who use knowledge and those who have an understanding of, of the potential of, of a knowledge are all Gnostics. So what is this the knowledge of? Well, you have the knowledge of magic, you have the knowledge of, of the, uh, of beyond, you know, the metaphysics. That's a form of knowledge. There's a pagan knowledge. The paganism certainly had a knowledge to it. Well, the knowledge of spells, that's, that's particularly your magic comes out of that. But the thing is, the Eastern Christian Church also had its own set of, uh, of knowledge, you know, Gnosis. But it's the, it's the Gnosis of the Holy Spirit. And then understand that we are interconnected, in, as a Christian, we are intertwined with that knowledge. The knowledge of the Holy Spirit. What makes the, the pagan Gnostic pagan is because there is a separation between themselves and God. Unless, of course, you're part of the initiate view that they call the Illuminati. And there are steps, there are stages to get to that, it's called the Illumin stage, but it's not, it's not always front and present. There is often, you know, hidden components. And they're in places that you wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily ex expect. Because we always talk about universities as humanistic. You know, this is where your 
scholastic stuff. Scholastics are typically humanists. Well, what are some of the chief scholastics? The ones that everyone read and followed, like Hegel, weren't actually scholastics. They weren't humanists. Behind the scenes, and in the words, and in the subtext, they were Gnostic. And more precisely to the point, they were pagan Gnostic. As I said before, this is what's all playing out now. The pagan Gnosis, the pagan Gnostics, is coming back again. This is what happens with socialism. So, socialism and humanism collapses, destroys itself, and it it, it re evolves, re emerges as Gnosticism. It's what you see. It's what you see at Coachella. And most of the Gnostic perspectives, except for the Christian one, the Eastern Christian one, which is not known to the West, so a large chunk of the, uh, of the Western Christians get this really wrong. A large chunk of the, the Eastern Christianity is not known. The structure of, of, of the knowledge, the structure of the Gnosis, is not known. adjust the camera a little bit. Those uh, bounces in the road really knock you around and knocks the camera around and so you have to put it back into place again. So this, this, is, this is sort of the situation that's going on. I talk about in my uh, vlog, you always now have the transition points rather than the beginning of the day and the ending day. Uh, so we vlog at the transition points. And this is what the world is going through now. Is we're going through a transition point where we're leaving humanism and entering the phase of Gnosis. And because a large chunk of the humanist phase, the humanist uh, perspective of the world, uh, were produced by Gnostics, a large chunk of what's going to happen over the next few years will look very similar. It's not going to change that much. 